You've been, you must be doing nothing but read, read about yourself these days, because you have two films hit sort of at the same time like that. And are you ever tempted to take pen in hand and send a scorching letter off to a critic? I have. Have you? I think it's very costly to do it, but I, I have. If it's costly, that must imply that they don't review you on terms of what you do, but because of how you feel about it. Oh, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know that it's ever visible or that you can ever actually trace it, but I think it does happen, yes. Yeah. Anything bugging you now? <laughs> no, I, I only hate it when... Uh, uh, how about the time review? Of what? Judge Roy Bean. They haven't told you about it? <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul, but you call me up when I do a lousy show and... <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. It's so funny. I don't read reviews as an actor, generally speaking. I yeah. have come to read reviews as when I produce or direct a picture because I want to be involved in the advertising and, yeah. and stuff. So it's, it's interesting to find out you know, what kind of a balance there is in that. Uh, someone, it's your friends who always uh, send you the bad reviews. They always right. say, call you up and say, did you read that? And then they, they read it to you over the phone, which is a bit of a drag, but... Thought you'd want to know. Yeah. I don't like reviews that are cute. And I don't like reviews that... Uh, really glorify the reviewer and don't tell the people who are reading anything about about the picture really and uh in that specific review <laughs> uh i mean to <clears throat> i don't know it was kind of a literary cartoon and i i don't know that you should get a great many points for that uh and the other thing that it was a very good review for the bear in Roy Bean, and a rather poor, shabby review for myself. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and that is kind of interesting, because it really shows, on the part of the reviewer, complete ignorance about acting. I mean, there is no... What, you're better than the bear? No. <laughs> if, if, you, if you're worth your salt as an actor, you stand back gracefully and give the bear the scene. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think for a minute, you know, that, that you could uh, equal a trained bear in a scene, and so you do it as graciously and as happily and as joyfully as possible. <laughs> and for the, the reviewer to uh, indicate that it was my obligation to steal the scene from the bear would yes. indicate that he really doesn't know anything about acting and doesn't really care about it. So... Well, who um, is this Jay Cox at Time Magazine, anyway? <laughs> we'll have him out of there. I think he's an intellectual cripple. You're going to come on here and, and insult my former roommate. <laughs> was he really? No. <laughs> well, oh, we have to take a station say, break. We'll be back. Uh, too bad. Fix your tie. Oh. <laughs> so his tie was showing and it said Tie City, and people were. <laughs> Listen, I didn't mean to kid you about your singing. I thought it was quite fetching. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's, uh, <clears throat> I, I, the funny thing about, uh, about this, I, when, when I came out, they were playing uh, Raindrops, yeah. Keep Falling My Head, which I thought was, was kind of interesting. And there's something very strange that happened in the island of Malta. We went with John Houston and some other people to the casino there. And the band was a hundred yards down the, the way. And as we walked in and took our seats, for some reason, they started playing uh, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. So I turned to John and I said, John, if we're lucky, the next time we come in here, they'll be playing the Yellow Rose of Texas. <laughs> and they immediately struck up the Yellow Rose of Texas. <laughs> I mean, the four of us Just sat at the table said. and the hair rose on the back of the head. <laughs> and because, I mean, a band in Malta playing the Yellow Rose of Texas <laughs> is something that you have to conjure with. Now, I, 
really don't know, but the, the four of us were absolutely speechless at the table. Maybe it was the Yellow Rose of Malta. It's a similar song. <laughs> Same number of syllables. Maybe. <laughs> Well, what was the, uh, the bear is supposed to be, is supposed to be quite uh, remarkable. He drinks beer and, did you teach him that or how did he learn to, no. how did he do that? It's, uh, I, I don't want to give up that trainer's secrets. I really don't. Oh, okay. the, the bear yeah, is extraordinary and, uh, uh, and tough and delicious and great fun to be around. He also had a trained lion, which he brought down. Yeah. And uh, with great joy, we used to, uh, have agents or literary people who would come down to Houston's trailer that we had on the set there. And we would send the lion in. <laughs> and the lion would walk in the door. And it was really marvelous to watch the expressions, the various expressions on these <laughs> people's face as this lion came through the door. They, they had no way to deal with it emotionally at all. <laughs> Some of them would just sit there and pretend that this incredible dinosaur was not in the room. <laughs> And the other people would, would just jump up and hide behind the sofa. And, uh... A lion walking? Probably thought he was selling mutual funds. Or something. Or something. <laughs> but the, he really had those animals trained so, yeah. so beautifully. I mean, my children would, would walk with the lion, sit on the lion, yeah. and uh, chase the lion around. Don't want to try that in the jungle, however. No, Take, no. Yeah. I hope we don't tra have not trained them improperly. What's a bear's name, uh, Bruno. Name? The bear's name was Bruno. Bruno, Bruno of course. <laughs>